Hey guys, it's Flip. Today I'm going to show you how to build a retaining wall. So we've got this little bed here with an overgrown rose bush and some irises that we've cut down. And as you can see, we've just got these little pavers on the ground. And they don't do a very good job of keeping in the soil and the mulch. So we're going to go ahead and put in a little retaining wall to do a better job of keeping everything in the bed and to make it look a little nicer. Here's a retaining wall I built in my backyard. And I'm going to do this one pretty much the same way with the same style brick. And if you're wondering why this one's kind of two-toned, it's because I went back a few years after I built it and added a top row. So the top row of bricks is not quite as weathered as the bottom rows. So the first thing we're going to do is get these pavers out of here and then we'll start our trench for our bottom row of the wall. We're going to dig a trench that's about a foot wide and about six inches deep. So first I just removed the old pavers. The next thing I did is I put a stake at each point where the wall is going to end to mark where I want the front edge of my trench to be. That way I can measure from the string to the foundation and from the stakes to the foundation to make sure the front edge runs parallel with the house. Then I used a straight edge shovel or you could use a spade for this to dig out the front edge of my trench along that string to make sure it's a straight line. Again, you're going to want this trench to be about a foot wide and about six inches deep. Keep in mind you're going to want to have a few inches of paper base in here and still have room for your first row of blocks to sit about halfway underground. So here I am getting back to work the next day, just getting the trench deeper and then getting this side part of the wall dug out where I want the wall to turn. Then you want to use a tamp to start tamping down the dirt at the bottom of the trench. Then use a level to start checking how level it is. If it's not level, you want to go back in and start digging out the high spots. The closer you can get it to level now, the easier it's going to be later when you put your pea gravel or your paver base in and you start to put in your first row. So just keep repeating that process of digging, tamping, and checking for level until you get it as close to level as you can. Then go ahead and put in your paver base. There's a lot of different types you can choose from. Personally, I like to use pea gravel, but whatever type you choose, make sure to put it down a few inches deep. And if you're wondering what that weird shadow is in the shot here, I put up a canopy over my work area because it was so hot. Once your paver base is in, go ahead and tamp that as well. Then repeat the process of checking for level and making adjustments. I even use a small level to check for level from front to back. So now comes the most important part of putting in a retaining wall and that is laying down the bottom row. Each block needs to be the exact same height as the block next to it and level front to back and level side to side. This can be a slow, painstaking, even somewhat frustrating job but it's essential to the integrity of your wall. Any mistakes you make here are going to be more amplified the bigger your wall gets. It's not going to look good and your wall will be unstable. So it's important you take your time and just get this as perfect as you can. This is the hardest part of building a retaining wall. The next rows just stack on. So just know that while this may take a while, this is the hardest part. Once you get this first row down, the hard part's over. Sometimes this takes adding a little paper base under a certain part of the brick. Sometimes this takes removing a little paper base. And sometimes you can use a rubber mallet and hammer down a certain side of the brick. But ultimately you have to get it level. So when you're building a retaining wall on a hill, you start at the low side and eventually you're going to hit a point where that first row of blocks is going to run underground. So that point for me was right here. When I put this block in, it was actually all the way underground. Um, so there's no need for it. That's just wasted retaining wall blocks. So what I'm gonna do is fill this back in with dirt to get it to where it'll be about even with my first row of blocks. And we'll just start a second row right here. That'll be parallel all the way across on top of the first row. So here I'm just filling in the trench with some dirt to step it up and then tamping it down.
Oh, yeah? yeah. Right, they do. So then I had a pea gravel on top of the dirt and got it to where it was the same height as my first row and tamped it down as well. Then it's just a matter of getting it level with the same tricks we talked about before. All right, so I got the first row in. That's the hard part. We ended up with two steps in it, one here and then a second step right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and backfill this with some pea gravel behind the first row and then we can start putting our second row on. That's the easy part. Putting this pea gravel behind the wall is another key part of the building process. This is going to help water drain behind the wall. And now comes the fun part. You get to stack on your remaining rows and watch your wall come to life. You can use an adhesive caulk if you like to help your rows really stick. I had a drain pipe sticking out that was partially broken, so I decided to cut the end off of it to give it a straighter edge. Then I sand it up where I cut to give it a smoother finish and to make it look nicer. Then I filled it behind the wall with dirt to get the bed up to the top of the wall. Then we topped it off with mulch and put a little dirt in front so we could plant some grass seed there in the fall. Alright, we're all finished with the wall. I am going to go back and get a gutter extension to run the water right here over the wall. Um, but other than that, our wall is all finished. So what I'm going to do now is cut back and show you the before shot one more time. So here's the before shot. And here's the after. All in all, it took us about three days of working on and off, taking breaks from the heat, but it's all done now. So hopefully this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.